نحمد ونسلی ونسلم على سيدنا ومولانا محمد رسوله النبي الأمين المكين الحنين الكريم الرؤوف الرحيم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من يخرج من بيته مهاجرا إلى الله ورسوله ثم يدرك الموت فقد وقع أجره على الله وقال الله تبارك وتعالى الذين جاهدوا فينا لنهدينهم سبلنا صدق الله مولانا العظيم ریسپیکٹڈ الشیخ القبیر المحدث الفقیح الشیخ اسعد سعید الساغر جی المقر الفاضل العظیم الشیخ عبد الرحمن الحمامی ادر Honorable guests, my beloved sons and daughters, brothers and sisters who have traveled in the path of Almighty Allah and His Holy Prophet All of you are the travelers, are the seekers, the talibin and as-salikin, the seekers and travelers in the way of Almighty Allah to receive Allah's player to receive Allah's intimacy, to receive Allah's company of nearness, to receive Allah's blessings, to receive Allah's mercy and favors, and finally to receive Allah's vision and His meeting. This is the niyyah of your travel. This is the main objective of your coming here and spending three days of your life. This is a collective khalwa, solitude. The moment you left your houses, you became al-muhajir, the immigrants towards Allah and Almighty Allah states, مَنْ يَخْرُجْ مِنْ بَيْتِهِ مُحَاجِرًا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ And whosoever leaves his house with intention of going to Allah and his Prophet with the intention of meeting Allah and his Holy Prophet and his player and if he dies even his way and he couldn't arrive at his destination Almighty Allah promises even then he would get his full reward and he would meet his full aim and objective by the blessing of Almighty Allah 
only for the sole reason that his intention was pure his act was sincere and his objective was great but the condition is that one has to bear in his mind that he is the traveler towards path of almighty allah so my dear participants and audience keep in your mind that a traveler has to be free of heedlessness a traveler cannot be ghafil he cannot be heedless he has to be vigilant all the time he has to be meditating he has to be contemplating on his objectives he has to be busy in sacred struggle al mujahada and he the traveler cannot afford to become heedless heedlessness leads the traveler to defeat heedlessness leads the traveler towards deprivation so he has to be patient attentive and striving only then his name would be written in the record divine record as al muhajir ila allah wa rasul respectable guests and my dear sons and daughters you have the whole life for rest you have the whole life for sleep you have the whole life to eat you have the whole life to laugh you have the whole life to play you have taken 3 days off from your usual life this is not a holiday as somebody goes to switzerland or someone goes to lake district or someone goes to new zealand on a player trip your coming here of course is a player trip but this player is not the player of your body this is the player of your heart this should be the player of your soul and this should be the player of your spirit and this player my dear sons and daughters can only be achieved if you cut yourself off and cut yourself from the temptations of your lower self inna an-nafsa la ammaratun bis-su this lower self the representative of our body and there is a an upper self higher self the spirit this is the representative of almighty allah and the mala al ala and the world of spirits and between these two representatives there is a heart the capital of the city of our body lower self nafs al ammara is always representing the wish the will the command and temptation given by the shaitan given by dunya which leads you towards noun towards sleep lower self calls you towards rest because body is pleased with resting body is always pleased when you sleep body is always pleased when you eat body is always pleased when you go out and feel free to play and for gossip but the more you please your body 
the more you disturb and weaken your spirit spirit does not get player through sleep spirit does not get player through eating spirit does not get player through gossiping spirit does not get player through fulfillment of temptation of lower souls there is a large difference of the requirements of the lower self and the spirit spirit has come from al mala ul aala spirit was the friend and used to live in the company of angels spirit was born and lived and nourished and developed in the company of the lights of almighty allah spirit has been living before she entered into the cage of her our body spirit used to live in the company of allah in the company of player of almighty allah in the company of nearness of almighty allah where there was no food where there was no sleep where there was no rest spirit is used to these habits and it was present in the cage of our body body came from this material world and material world has a specific habits of sleeping specific habits of eating specific habits of resting specific habits of sexual intercourse special specific habits of other spiritual and sexual temptations so there is a large contradiction between the two this nafs and lower self want to rule over the heart and rule over the body and spirit wants to bring the heart towards the nearness of almighty allah towards the close company of almighty allah so that the physical man living in this material world may become a spiritual man better than the people living in the malaul ala this camp has been organized just for 3 days only to bring you out of those clutches of temptation to take you away from the control of those physical habits and to bring you closer to the habits of the malaul aala angelic habits spiritual habits those habits which will lead you towards al hijra ila allah wa rasul my dear sons and sisters and brothers and daughters i am not here to gain or to receive anything from the al hidayah organizations or from you i don't receive gifts i don't receive money i don't receive the salaries i don't receive the compensations nothing of this material world i have to receive from anyone in this world my pain my concern is only to steal you i am fighting against a person and he is shaitan he stole us from the company of allah and he took us away from the nearness of the malaul aala he has stolen us i am a thief against a big thief who is shaitan fa bi izzatika la uqwiyannahum ajma'in he swore that o oh almighty allah i will try to take away each and every individual of your creatures away from you away from the right path away from your nearness away from the guidance away from the truthfulness away from the piety away from the good acts he is continuously stealing the people and taking them away from the nearness of almighty allah from submission of almighty allah from obedience of almighty allah from acts of piety and worship of almighty allah he is stealing the people and i am here to steal 
our stolen speaker back from him and bring it again to the path of almighty allah a fight is going on but i would be successful only if you cooperate with me if your heart is ready to be stolen for sake of allah those hearts which have already been stolen by shaitan those selves which have and souls which have already been stolen by shaitan which have already been stolen by this material world which have already been stolen by this material wishes and temptations we have to cut down the roots of temptations from our heart we have to de-link and disassociate our heart and soul and spirit from shaitanic and from evil temptations and we have to bring them back as they used to be laqad khalaqna al-insana fi ahsan at-taqwim we have to bring them back from asfal asafilin and restore their status of ahsan at-taqwim and this cannot be done without a spiritual effort and struggle and striving al mujahada without two things al hijra wal mujahada al hijra is the traveling is the journey of niya journey of your motive journey of your intention you have to make an intention you have to develop your will whether you want to go towards almighty allah and his holy prophet or not and the second your struggle your striving al mujahada because almighty allah stated bal ladina jahadu fina lanahdiyannahum subulana we open our doors of closeness we open our doors and gates of nearness we open our gates of pleasure and we open our gates of blessings only on those people who strive hard in our way only on those people who work and struggle hard to achieve my pleasure and blessing only on those people who try to come out of the state of heedlessness from ghafla towards yakza only those who try to leave the sleep and love unrestness this unrestness of the bodies i assure you in the name of allah unrestness of your body will provide your spirit with a great rest if you disturb your body it will provide a rest and satisfaction and consolation to your spirit in order to achieve the nearness you have to be far from something in order to achieve you have to lose something in order to receive you have to be detached from something you have to lose either receive the rest of body or receive the rest of the love and nearness of almighty allah two things cannot be combined in one heart this is your young life my dear sons and daughters we have lived our young life most of the part of years of our life have gone away in heedlessness you have still many many years to travel we we are the losers you have still lot many things to gain this is the life this is the time to go on right track to go on right path just 3 5 6 sessions of 2 days 3 days if you cannot leave and cannot come out of the heedlessness if you cannot practice the unrestlessness for just 3 days how almighty allah will put you on the path of his spiritual rest for whole of life 
become the beginners so that you may achieve the arrival almighty allah says and as for those who strive in my way in my path surely we shall guide them and open the doors of our ways to them سيدنا غوث العظم شيخ عبد القادر الجيلاني and he mentions that in holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam stated the hadith of al mujahada and it was narrated by abu nadra he says that the reporter the companion who reported this hadith and transmitted this hadith from holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam abu saeed al khudri his eyes were filled with tears when he mentioned the state of al mujahada shaykh abu ali ad daqaq the shaykh of imam abul qasim al qushairi he says if the servant adorns his outer being his zahir with sacred struggle with sacred striving and that is al mujahada allah will beautify his batin his inner being and innermost faculties with direct perception of mushahada the one who loves and starts practically al mujahada in his life and he adopts and adorns his zahir outer being will mujahada with the sacred striving almighty allah beautifies his batin and inner being with mushahada with witnessing and vision and there is a consensus of opinion among the great awliya and saints and sufiya and tabi'in atba'ut tabi'in that if any seeker as we are and you are is not dedicated to the sacred struggle the striving al mujahada in his initial stage in his beginning he will never ever experience anything of the value of spiritual path in his life up till the end those who adopt mujahada in the beginning only those are conferred with the state of mushahada in their end imam shafi reports on authority of sayyidina fudail bin iyaz radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala qala daud an nabi alayhi salam الهي كن لابني كما كنت لي he invoked supplication requested almighty allah sayyidina daud alayhi salam the great prophet and asked oh my lord oh my allah please be kind merciful caring loving and pleased with my son in the same way as you are with me he invoked this supplication for his son in favor of his son oh allah please be with my son same as you are with me hazrat fudail bin iyaz says that almighty allah revealed on his heart he said fa awha allah taala ilayhi ya dawood qul li ibnik yakun li kama kunta li akunu lahu kama kuntu lak o dawood alayhi salam tell your son that he should be with me same as you are with me then i will also become with him as i am with you meaning thereby if somebody wakes and his son doesn't wake he sleeps so how almighty allah's blessings can become equal for the both in somebody is busy in spiritual 
and sacred striving and struggle and other one is busy in heedlessness how can almighty allah's players become equal for both in somebody sleeps and eats and the other is awake and he is hungry so how the please player of almighty allah can be equal and same with the both sayyidna ibrahim bin adham radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu i'm quoting from imam abu al-qasim al-qushairi from ar-risala al-qushairiya he says that alamatu al-abd as-sadiq and as-salik the true traveler true traveler the sign of the true traveler is that he opens for himself four things and locks for himself the four things an yaftah bab al mujahada wa yughlik bab ar raha wa yaftah bab as sahar wa yughlik bab an naum wa yaftah bab al zul wa yughlik bab al izz wa yaftah bab al faqr wa yughlik bab al ghina he says the sign of a true traveler he he must lock the door of comfort on him and open the door of extraordinary spiritual struggle and striving the beginning of the travelers of almighty allah's path is that they the first door which they are required to close and lock on them is the door of comfort is the door of rest and they have to open the door of spiritual striving and struggle secondly he has to lock up the door of sleep and open the door of wakefulness he has to lock up the door of sleep as much as possible and open the door of wakefulness then he has to lock the door of dignity honor and arrogance and open the door of humility and humbleness and fourth he has to lock the door of wealth struggle for gaining the wealth and lust of wealth and lust of worldly comforts and open the door of poverty and faqr and he has law has to lock the door of hopeful expectations of this world and he has to open the door of preparation for the death preparation for the life hereafter and he has to lock the door of plenty and open the door of a hardship he has to lock the door of rukhsa and he has to open the door of al azima unless these doors are closed on him and the other doors are opened for him he cannot start his spiritual journey to al almighty allah and explaining the same concept imam hasan al kazaz stated this business of spirituality this business of spiritual travel is built on three things one that you do not eat unless you really need it eating is not to fill the stomach eating is just for fulfill the basic need of your body secondly that you do not sleep unless the sleep or slumber overwhelms you and it becomes indispensable to sleep for you and third you do not speak except in response to an emergency particularly whenever you speak for good for piety 
for whatever is required from almighty allah to speak with any imam muhammad bin fadl al balkhi says the true comfort the people are searching the comfort in their life he says but they unfortunately they don't understand what is the real comfort he says the true comfort is the freedom of the self from desires of your nafs freedom of the man freedom of the person from the desires and temptations of your lower nafs this is freedom unless you free yourself from the prison of your lower self from the prisons of the desires and temptations and propensities of your lower self you are still slave you are a prisoner freedom means to get al khalas from your lower self from nafs and when a person gets khalas from the lower self freedom from the lower self he becomes mukhlas and mukhlas is the higher stage where a mukhlis arrives his latest de de destination imam mansur bin abdullah he says that how i heard imam abu ali arruzbari he said spiritual damage to a man spiritual damage is caused by three things one is the sickness of the natural constitution sickness of your tabia this is the natural physical constitution of your body tabia if this tabia is sick ill this causes damage to your spirit second sticking to habitual custom if you stick to your habitual custom habitual custom is to sleep as much as possible to eat as much as possible to go for rest as much as possible to play as much as possible to be in the company of the friends those friends who are not useful and beneficial to you in the day of judgment imam hasan al basri radhiyallahu ta'ala no he taught his students and he said whenever you want to choose a friend before deciding about your friendship you have to decide and check whether this friendship and his company would be useful to two on the day of judgment or not if this friendship is not going to be useful and beneficial in the day of judgment then there is no use and benefit of his company in this world that's why the third thing he said keeping bad company the bad sohba then he was asked what is the sickness of natural constitution the sickness of tabia he said consumption of unlawful food and exaggeration in eating eating for the sake of eating he was asked what is meant by sticking to habitual custom he said looking at the things which are unlawful to you and loving the habits and customs which are not desired by almighty allah and involving in the habits which take you away from almighty allah and this is heedlessness al ghafla then he was asked the lending an ear to back biting and what he was again asked what is keeping of a bad company he said every time a lustful appetite of your lower self and following your lower self is the most worst company in your life your lower self if you remain in the company of your nafs al ammara if you follow the wishes of your nafs if you follow the temptations of your nafs so this is the bad company which you are keeping in your life and nafs will always 
keep you away from the company of almighty allah and from the company of holy prophet and from the company of the spiritual people company of the saints and the company of the beloved and blessed people of almighty allah sheikh abu madian al maghribi stated that the spirituality is not just the following apparent following of the commandments spirituality consists of personal and spiritual integrity of your heart integrity of your heart security of your heart from sins security of your heart from bad desires security of your tabia from heedlessness this is the spirituality first element of spirituality and the second element of spirituality is generosity of spirit salamatu sudur wa sakhawatu nufus generosity of the spirit and third the following of what has been revealed through the knowledge of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam these are the three ingredients and indispensable elements of spirituality and putting the spiritual effort and endeavor and striving and spiritual struggle in the line of these three elements and the one who deviates and neglects any of these three sources he will find himself grazing in the garden of satan and he would be submerged in the ocean of lust and he would be wandering in the darkness of ignorance lusts and temptations of lower self is just an ignorance lust and temptations of lower self is a garden made by shaitan lust and temptations is an ocean of shaitan which is extremely fatal for spiritual life then sheikh abu madian al maghribi stated there there are five basic signs and basic conditions to be fulfilled by a spiritual traveler these are the basic attributes of the traveler one is to restrain his lusts to get freedom of his of the lusts of his lower self second is that he should glorify almighty allah in his worship and he should increase the act of worship of almighty allah and acts of piety for the sake of almighty allah as much as possible and then he should weep over whatever he has lost from the acts of salvation he should weep over sins which he has been committing in his life in the past he should weep over heedlessness which he has been performing throughout his life he should weep over the acts of disobedience which he has been performing in his past he should weep over the acts which has been taking him away and which has been depriving him from the player and nearness and blessings of almighty allah he should weep on that he should feel shame on that and he should repent on that and he should travel from the lust of the lower self towards the higher attributes of the spirit and then he should distance himself from the sins sins of zahir and sins of batin and then he should seek allah's protection from the terrors of the day of judgment my dear sons and daughters how many of you love to become al muhajir ila allah wal rasul how many of no let me finish my question and then if you become want to become al muhajir al musafir as salik ila allah the traveler towards allah in the path of allah 
then you have to come out of heedlessness you have to reduce your eating habits you have to reduce your sleeping habits even your body feels tired the question is what kind of tiredness your body is feeling tiredness by sitting why you are sitting you are sitting and you are sitting to listen some words of holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam to listen the advices and messages of holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam to listen to listen the lessons of almighty allah to listen the message which will take you to the nearness of almighty allah the a message which will lead you towards the valley of closeness and valley of of realization of almighty allah the valley which will take you away from the love of the world and which will enter you into the valley of love and nearness of almighty allah to improve your inner attributes to improve your inner moral attitudes inner moral conduct to improve your inner abilities so that you may be able to please almighty allah and you may be able to enter into the gardens of paradise and gardens of pleasure of almighty allah and finally the curtain would be unveiled and you may be able to see and witness the beauty of almighty allah and this seal would never be unveiled this curtain will never be will be removed from those who pass their life in heedlessness those who were awake those who left their sleep those who left their beds those who reduce their eating those who reduce their habits just for the vision of almighty allah just to please almighty allah just for that moment when curtain is going to be removed with his unlimited beauty and he would say oh my angels remove this curtain between me and my lovers these are the people who left the beds and sleep these are the people who left the food and eating just for this moment so that they may see my beauty so the curtain would be removed so who many among you are willing to see the beauty of almighty allah on that day can i see your hands can i see your hands but this beauty of almighty allah cannot be witnessed by putting your body in trouble by putting your body in unrestness by tiring your body if you tire your body your spirit get rest so is it possible just for two days that none of you none of you remain absent this is a presence for the sake of presence of all in the presence of almighty allah in young life in young life what we would say that we came on hijra and rihla and we were still looking for rest and we were still feeling tired and we were still feeling heedless and we were still feeling hungry those who love to be hungry almighty allah feeds them with his own hands of love those who keep their eyes away from sleep almighty allah will put the light in their eyes of the vision of almighty allah his vision so can i expect from you that none of you would be absent even the who we are sitting here the whole night there were awliya and saints even atba utabeen and tabeen who used to pray fajr prayer with the wuzu ablution of isha imam e azam abu hanifa he prayed salatul fajr with ablution of salatul isha for 40 years in his life continuously sayyidna ghosul azam sheikh abdul qadir jilani prayed salatul fajr with ablution of isha for 40 years in his life imam abu hanifa finished the recitation of whole quran for 7000 times in tawaf of kaaba imam muhammad bin jafar al-qattani 
the great imam of the old times not the latest one he finished 12000 times the whole of quran from alham to banas during tawaf of kaaba hundreds of tabeen and atba'ut tabeen used to stand the whole night in spiritual struggle in front of almighty allah just waiting when the door of his nearness and closeness is opened for them almighty allah says oh my lovers how can i accept you my lovers you are sleeping and i am awake can such person be a lover if his beloved is awake and he is sleeping hi is this a justifiable act that one claims to be lover and being claimant of lover he is sleeping and his beloved is awake la ta'khuzuhu sinatun wala naum this is a fortunate moment for you at this time you are fresh you are being awake while your body is fresh has lesser price it has lesser price your price of sitting would be increased in the evening session during night session when your body will feel tired and then you will throw the tiredness away and still you will sit for sake of almighty allah then the price of your sitting would be increased when you are sitting when you are fresh has lesser price he is the buyer and you are the seller he says if everybody sits here with when after eating he says this is a just normal practice normal habit nothing different the question is when you feel hungry and you instead of feeding your body with food you feed your body with spiritual things with remembrance of allah with renunciation with the recitation with concept of the company of almighty allah these are the things with you your body your heart and your spirit is fed then your becoming remaining hungry increases the price of your life you are sitting during nights increases the price of your life because night is for sleep and when the time for sleep comes then he asks the angels go and count the people who are awake when the everybody is sleeping their names are marked and the day on the day of judgment the curtains would be removed for only those person who remained awake when everybody was asleep 